Right. I mean, the concept is pretty. It, the concept is pretty simple. I mean, really, it is. All we're doing is providing basic need. I, I hope. I don't want to let any cats out of the bag because of my Switzerland lecture, but I, I'm covering this in a very different way than I did with my Houston humanist lecture. Um, I hope it gets recorded because then I can I can put that out. I personally don't own a video camera. Yes, I'm an aerospace engineer without a quality video camera. You all can shut up and laugh later. But <laughs> I just, unfortunately, we all have money issues, and that's just something I can't afford to do is spend my money on gadgets and stuff like that. Um, to to take on trips with me. So I won't be able to record my lecture, but I'm hoping somebody there will. Um, I think Heather's going to be there, and she has that uh, those kinds of things or access to them. And so hopefully um, I'll have a uh, I'll have a a way to record my lecture, and hopefully that will give you guys a different direction and a different way to uh to approach how to talk to people and relate that relate it to them on a on a personal level um because all we're saying is technology has the capability to provide every man woman and child on this planet every need and want that they need to live that's it and that kind of shocks people because they don't understand the current state of technology it also shocks them because throughout the course of all human history, we've never had that capability. And so it's difficult, you know, for them to get. But if you can relate it to them on a personal level, that kind of can change the thinking. You know, think local, act global. And so that's that's kind of how we need to go. Tizak, I just read what you said, uh, your, your big post here. Um, we could worry about a lot of stuff. I mean, propaganda, we could worry about an asteroid crashing into the planet. I mean, we could worry about a lot of stuff. I mean, if we if we always worry about what they or it or something else is going to do, we are never going to do a damn thing. And at some point, we've just got to say, screw it and try and just press and go and cross those, cross those bridges when we get to them. Um, I don't know. If we build up all these cities and somebody launches nuclear weapons that goes to destroy mankind, I mean, how the hell are we going to stop that from happening? I mean, the best that we can do is, over time, slowly break down that psychosis, that want to destroy something which is good. And, you know, that's what we're trying to uh, to move towards. But I cannot waste my time worrying about what nefarious groups, organizations, or anybody else is going to do. I am, come hell or high water, going to move towards at least the construction in my lifetime of the research city to show the world that it is possible. What the world does with it after that is beyond my control. And Seth, I don't want a space shuttle tile as a coffee cup coaster because those things are fragile as hell and probably wouldn't be able to hold the weight of the coffee cup. I've actually played with those tiles before. They're kind of funny. Uh, when I did a trip over to the Kennedy Space Center, I went to the OPF, the Orbiter Processing Facility, where they had a discovery up on Jacks. My, my bird was on the launch pad. You can, you can see that I'm not BSing anybody. If you go to my Facebook page, one of my photo albums is my trip to the Kennedy Space Center, where I am on the top of the launch pad near the nose cone of the. Uh, of the external tank of, of my shuttle Endeavor as it was on the launch pad. So there's proof that I was there. But uh, <clears throat> you, you hold those tiles, and they are the lighter, lightest little flimsy things. They can withstand a boatload of heat without question, but they are so flimsy it's hilarious. All right, well, if nobody else has anything, it's about 9.45 for me, and I probably need to take a shower and go to bed. But if anybody has another question or anything they want to throw at me real quick, I'm receptive for about two more minutes, and then I gotta bugger off. Hey Kelly, I, I see you in your in the chat box. You wanted to ask, how do you want to move towards the research research city? Um, do you still want to ask that question? Yeah, um, we're kind of we've got this um, chicken and the egg thing again. Uh, to build the city requires a huge amount of resources. Um, you know, how do we do this? That's an excellent question, and actually, thanks for the research center are actually progressing right now. Um, 
in an interesting way. Now, none of this is concrete, but I'll give you uh, some information that uh, how many of you are, let me just tell you, we have a, a display in Eidenhoven in the Netherlands uh, at their, uh, at a uh, sustainability building that they have. Um, and so they, uh, they really liked uh, the presentation that was put on there by Heather and Andrew and uh, Jock and Roxanne were there also in Eidenhoven and stuff. And they like it so much that they might want to make it a permanent part of the display in that center. And uh, we are working as a way to maybe set up an office there. That would be the start of the research center. It's kind of everything gives in bits and pieces. And so if we can get that going – then we can get a permanent location there, and if we can get a permanent location there, then we can turn it into a research center. You see how I'm going? It's just the dominoes have to fall. So, you know, that's that's going too far ahead. We're not there yet. But just to give you an idea, they like the um, the presentation that was there and the setup that they want to uh, poss they want to keep it there. And so things are in the works right now to basically make it a permanent resident of that facility in the Eidenhoven in the Netherlands. Now, how is that very different from uh, the establishment that's in Venus, Florida? It's not, really. I mean, it's more of an office than it is a residence. Um, it'd probably be a hell of a lot cheaper to maintain than the residence in Venus, Florida, considering it'd be an office. Um, but what it does is it allows us to go a little more global. You know, we'll have a location in the States and have a location in the Netherlands. Uh, maybe try to get a location in Australia. We try to get some office setups if you want to think about it that way um, that would be the research center try not to think of the research center as one one place try to think of the research center as a network of places around the world that can access resources and get information share share that information the research and then when it comes to actually physically building something or testing something you at least have these little pods around the planet that can access people and resources to help make something. Does that make sense? Perfectly. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was sold on this idea years ago. I know. You're asking some really good questions, kind of playing a little bit of devil's advocate and stuff, and I appreciate that. And uh, so I just hope I'm uh, answering the questions as, as well as you can – as well as I can anyway. <laughs> a key thing for all of this, though, is patience. And I know that's hard to come by, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, but, you know – we can't we can't move too fast. First of all, we're not capable yet. Um, you know, we have quote unquote 400,000 members or something, but I don't see a lot of that being proved in in uh, uh, everyday conversation. Uh, and I don't even know how knowledgeable those members are. Um, you know, I don't know how well they know all the details of what the Venus Project stands for and all of its intricacies. So, you know. Patience is a virtue, and I know we don't have all the time in the world, but we have to be reasonable. And I would say, you know, we're talking a couple of years out for a movie, a couple of years out from, you know, a, a large a globally set up research facility, all the little pods, maybe another couple of years out after that from uh, even trying to break ground on a test city. So you're looking at least 10 years probably. Um, and that's just my best guess. So could things go faster? Sure. Something could happen. They could change the world, and all of a sudden everybody loves us, and we switch over. Um, or it could take longer. You know, We can't guess that, but if you're going to try to put this on a Gantt chart like an engineering project and time everything out to milestones, I get everything about a three-year gap between every major milestone that we want at least. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much, Doug. I, uh, I guess would you – Want to hear an update about how this, how the tri-state area um, chapters are going, or we could probably just update you through an email or something. Yeah, that would be good. This conversation went uh, kind of long. Good though, I liked it. It was good, and I appreciate all the questions, and I hope everybody, you know, appreciates the answers and stuff, you know. But it's 9:50 for me, and I've got to, you know, I just gave my daughter a kiss goodnight because she's got to go to bed. So I gotta, I have to follow her lead. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Great. So, uh, Doug, thank you so much for being here tonight. The Tri-State Chapters um, definitely give you a huge thank you. And for all the other guests from the other chapters as well, uh, thank you for coming out and 
getting the chance to listen to Doug. Um, Doug, you are, you know, a great help to the movement and humanity as a whole. So um, we look forward to what you are going to do in the future, and we're here to help you in any way possible. So I'm sure we'll keep in touch. So we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate everybody who participated. Um, I appreciate meeting new people and, and making some new friends and whatnot. Uh, if you can, find me on Facebook and friend me. I'm friends with everybody who doesn't somehow manage to turn themselves into a bonehead. You know, As long as you don't go down that road, <laughs> then we're good. So uh, thank you all very much. I appreciate it, and have a great evening, and we, I'll talk at you later.